Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Schoenberg. I'm a resident here at Zygo Press. That means I can rent a little space and work here whenever I want, except for right now, we have to work on a limited basis with very few people and socially distance. So my videographer is mm -hmm. 10 feet away mm -hmm. and no one else is around, a few people, but they are socially distanced as well. So anyway, okay. I'm gonna show you how to make cyanotypes. So I have my paper ready to go, my Reeves BFK, and you can use anything like Stonehenge or any kind of paper, like I said. And then I put it, I put it on a piece of plastic because this emulsion stuff, whatever it is, <laughs> chemicals, um, it can get all over everything and you don't want that. So I have this like anatype chemicals, part A and part B. Um, they're different kinds of chemicals. Uh, I don't have my glasses on, potassium ferrocyanide, and that one is ferric ammonium citrate. Citrate? Yeah. And you've got to mix them right before you use them. It's not good to have the mixture sit for a week or whatever. Um, so I just have a little ball jar here, and I'm going to mix equal parts of each. Make sure I have gloves on. I've gotten some of it on my fingers before, and it's just, it's okay. I think what it does is it does break down your skin a little bit so you don't want that and I want to just stir it up and you can use a wide brush um, and a hockey brush is better you don't really want this metal that much but um, this one is what I've been using and it's been okay just don't want to um, uh, you don't want any kind of mixture to mess up the solution, any kind of chemicals from metal. Okay, so then I'm just going to brush it on. And you don't need much. You want to just coat the whole sheet of paper. And obviously you want to do this in a dark area. So you could use a closet. Uh, I, I just use my dark basement and I take it to a darker spot to dry it. But in this case, I'm just gonna dry it right here. Okay, and I don't want this to sit in the solution. And I wanna make sure that I put the solution away from the light, you know, when we turn on the regular lights. Okay, so this is ready to go. Now, you can expose with it wet. It does all sorts of weird stuff, but we're, since we're doing sort of a, more non-traditional traditional, traditional <laughs> using different objects, I'm going to try and blow dry it so that it becomes fairly dry and ready to go. Um, and this will take about maybe two, three minutes. So I moved the dried paper. Now that it's dry, it takes about mm, two, three minutes with the blow dryer, moving it all around. Um, I moved it over to a piece of cardboard where now I can place my textures on top. So you still have to do this in the dark because it's, it'll, it'll start exposing. So I'm kind of, you know, like, this will change, depending on if I can get it off the sheet. This will change a little my textural collage, but that's okay. And it's just, uh, it's the um, randomness, which I kind of like anyway. Right? Um, and there's all sorts of things. Like this is just some branches from the backyard and then some leaves. And a friend of mine gave me a bouquet from her garden. I don't know if that'll go there. I had it over there, but let's just leave it. And then these are just some pieces of string. Or you could use raffia or whatever. It kind of gives the design a little, little movement. And you can cover as much or as little of the paper as you want with this stuff. Um, some traditional cyanotypes done with this method 
Sometimes I just have one flower in the middle of the page, but it really doesn't matter. I like to cover everything. And then I have a sheet of plexiglass, which I need to place on top. My clean sheet is underneath here. To sandwich everything down between the cardboard and the plexi, because you want it pretty tight. And then I'm going to, I'm actually thinking I will um, take this. Now you can get any kind of backing board. This is just car data cardboard. Um, and I think I am going to put it on top of this other sheet of plexiglass just to give it rigidity when I'm walking outside. And it also helps with the clamping. I'm going to clamp down four sides, make sure my clamps are not over the image, um, over the paper part. Um, at home I use um, bricks. You can use bricks and place them around the outside. You just don't want to place it right in the middle, obviously. And um, this side I probably will need to just put a weight down on because I can't get that clamp all the way. But I can do that. Now we go outside to expose to the light. Okay, so, so now we're outside and I'm just going to put a brick on this side. Weight it down. And you can see it, it, it was yellow in, in the dark room, but now it's turning colors because it's being exposed to the light. We don't have, we have an overcast day today, and actually the ideal thing is to have super bright sunlight. So I might just give it a few more minutes than I normally would. And now I have my timer, and I'm going to time it um, for probably 15 minutes. Okay, so I've set my timer. Um, actually, we talked for couple minutes so I set it for 13 plus 2 is 15 minutes and I just want to mention that when it starts to really expose it changes color and then it will become kind of almost a bronze color when it's finished but um, depending on how much light and we have like I said another past day. Another thing that you can do is you can move things around in the process. So I can take off the clamps and move something and it'll become a shadow. And one second left. Um, but it hasn't turned the uh, bronze color in the negative spaces like it's supposed to. It's a little brown here. Um, bronzy. It usually is pretty dark. Uh, it's a little bronze there. But I'm, I'm sure we have something. Okay, here comes the sun. <laughs> Let's give it, whoop. Hey, stay out, stay out. So the bright sunlight is important. Because I don't want to overexpose and get light underneath the shapes and then nothing comes out with any contrast. So we might as well just take it in and see what happens. finished with the washing stage, although I can sit in here for a good five minutes just resting. But um, with cyanotypes, they turn the bluest that they're going to turn 24 hours later. So this looks kind of light, but in 24 hours, it will turn, it will turn bluer. You can speed up that process by spraying it or pouring in a little diluted hydrogen peroxide. If I were to spray hydrogen peroxide on here now, it would become really bright blue. But I kind of want to leave it, and I can show you some results of what it will look like 24 hours later with some other samples. And isn't that interesting? The turquoise. I like it. <laughs> Even though it's not traditional, and again, this area of blue will get much darker when it dries. Okay, so when your paper dries for 24 hours, you'll get a much darker blue in the background and basically pretty monochromatic, not like what you saw earlier, which is more turquoise and whatever. So um, these, this is a little overexposed 
because everything that's supposed to be white is blue, so I might have left it in, sometimes I write it on the back, uh, I might have left it in 20 minutes with a really bright light and the light got underneath. But like this one was only 12 minutes with bright light. Uh, some areas around the edges get like solarized a little bit. And then when you move things, they change um, color too. Um, so you can see the dark blue. So it's been sitting in for at least five minutes. And I'm going to give it a final rinse. You know, at home, if you don't have one of these tubes and a sink like this, I just use a separate bucket and um, a gallon container of water. And I pour the water, fresh water, over top of it till I fill the tray. When I need to empty the tray, I pour it into a bucket. And then I put more water on, and then I pour it into the bucket, and then I throw the bucket um, water actually out. And then it can just be hung up to dry, like right here. Um, or it could be uh, put on a sheet of plexi to dry, or it could be, be put between blotters to dry, whatever you want to do. It's really unusual. So this is the one I just did today, and it's about an hour, hour and a half later, and you can see how it's gotten a lot darker uh, in the blue areas, and it will probably darken even more by this time tomorrow. So this one here is a dry, this is not quite dry yet, and this one is completely dry and was done about a week ago, and so you can see how the blue gets a lot darker with, after 24 hours, and then it pretty much stays the same. So that's the end result of that. So I think this one will darken up a little bit, at like, like you can see up here in this corner. It also depends on, I think, the layer of, uh, of chemical that you put on, and it's kind of hard to see in there. But anyway, I should probably wear my close-up lenses <laughs> when I do that. But that's, that's the result.